We find them all the time on so many houses. It's the old halogen lamps. This one's a 120 watt PIR, obviously hasn't worked for a long time. So I'm here to upgrade it and change it to an LED. But first things first, we've got to find out where it's fed from. Yes, that's live. So we go in here, where the consumer unit is. I've took the cover off already, so have a little look. And yes, we've found the supply. No, we haven't, it's still beeping. So we've got to find out which circuit, lighting circuit, hopefully, this is controlled by. So yes, I'm just trying it with my little death sticks to start with, to find out where I can find actually where it's fed from, and basically undo it, and then test it with my little volts testers to make sure that it is dead. But look, there is no chance of getting them screws off. They're ruined. They've been there for donkey's years, and yeah, that's not gonna come undone. So what we've got to do, is basically smash it off and although my little volt stick says yes that cable is dead you don't want to trust these volt sticks 100 percent they're not always right so to confirm i'm just going to knock the whole board off and then i can establish what the hell's going on with this where it's fed from so i can chop the cable and then test the cable to find out that i have got a live nutrient earth there thread from the lighting circuit that is protected by the right size fuse because yeah that twin and earth on the outside to start with is no good so now we've knocked it off i just want to strip this back to find out where it's fed from so yeah it never strips back perfect you can try your best but yeah it's got it open there so i can get to the live and neutral and stick my testers on to find out where it's got 240 volts and it uh, isolates off on the right size fuse because if it's normally spurred off a socket something stupid like that yeah you gotta rewire the whole lot so what my plan here is, is to get a couple of Wagos, stick them on the neutral, and then get another one and stick it on the live. And then my little tester, I can stick straight in to find out whether I've got 240. And this is another little thing with Wagos. You can just sort of use them like this. You don't have to have the old connector blocks where you get a screwdriver out. They're just easy to fit in there. Yeah, that one slipped out, but you can put them in there nice and neat be able to test if you've got 240 now I'll go back to the fuse board turn it on and uh, yeah see where it's fed from so the mains can put back on and yes we have no supply there so that's good so it's not fed from the main somewhere stupid I tell you what even though this was a PIR light I bet it's got a switch somewhere so I'm gonna look the other side of the wall and conveniently I look around and find a switch there. Hopefully this is not spurred off them sockets. There we go, we've got 240 on live and neutral, so we're laughing to start with. And then just to confirm yes. that it is actually on the lighting circuit and that cable is protected by the right size fuse. After that's confirmed, what we wanna do now is get these old screws out the wall. Even the raw plugs, they've been in there for I don't know how long. So I want to make sure I drill new holes, it's fixed right, and basically that it's not going to come down as soon as I leave. And what I'm going to replace it with is a 30 watt bell light with a PIR. This floodlight should be 10 times better than the one that was already up there. So we'll open it up, it's packaged well, and it's a bit smaller as well, but it comes with a flex. You can't wire that twin and earth straight into it, which is probably a good thing because that twin and earth should be on the inside of the house it's rather than on the outside wall anyway. Yeah, but fine, when you do get a beautiful much. customer, comes along, gives you a lovely mince pie, yeah, you can't go wrong with that. That'll keep you going. She puts it in the microwave as well to warm it up. No, <clears throat> In a one-on-one, I've got things to do. Get that in my mouth so I can chew while I was carrying on. So firstly, let's mark up where we're gonna fit this light and see if we can use the old holes what are up there to maybe put a new raw plug in and put the screws in, which conveniently, it seems like we can. So we'll get a screwdriver in there because I haven't got my impact handy and just do it up to get it nice and secure. So once that's done up nice and secure, yeah, it comes straight off the wall. That's a complete waste of time. That red plug was no good inside that hole. Yeah, it needs re-drilling or needs a new plan for this. 
So after getting some proper plugs in there, so it will fit secure and it fits a hole nice and neat, then get the new screws in. Basically, you can get this zipped up nice and tight and hopefully that'll stay. And if it grabs, you can hear it when it grabs because your ratchet will go on your impact driver and that will make sure that, yeah, it's on nice and tight. And now to get rid of this twin earth that was uh, yeah clipped on the outside wall. So what our plan is here is get myself a whisker box with a stuffing gland on the end and then back entry that twin and earth straight into the box where we can use a few wagos to basically connect that light up properly. And then there's no way that the twin and earth is going to get damaged with the outside elements. And then luckily as well, it wasn't a massive run of twin and earth. So we can put it where it comes out the wall near the top of the soffit just to then connect uh. up the flex onto the light it will just make it look a lot neater and nicer and well it'll be properly installed as well and then this is where my little arm eggs that go onto my impact driver come in handy fit them in there spot on and you can get straight in there and drill into this red brick a lot of people say oh let it let's see it do red brick well there you go here's your video mate go straight to that red brick beautifully not a problem whatsoever i'm just going the drill because i've done this no end of times to drill a couple of holes to basically fix that whisker box back and all we're going to put in there is a couple of red plugs and then some screws to fix the box back straight over that twin and earth cable and also tap these raw plugs in because if they stick out a little bit, it'll pull them out of the wall. It just won't go on properly. So give them a bit of a whack, put them in nice and neat. And in. All the way all the way in there, basically. So they fit in properly. So your screws will go in and uh, fix the box back nice and tight. And this is where I'm going to stick the uh, whisker box back up. I got it around the wrong way the first time. So I'm going to put it on the other way. And then just to make sure as well, we'll put a bit of CT1 in there. This is the see-through sealant stuff, just to seal it up so no moisture can get into the box at all or into the cavity of the wall where the twin and earth was drilled through because there wasn't any, any there to start with. So let's make the job a little better. And then once the box is fixed, we can strip back that twin and earth and probably get a better connection with the cable back in the box so we can get that back in the box stick a couple of way goes on where we can join our flex onto the live neutral and the earth and yes it is black and red so it's black and red in the box but we're joining on to uh, brown and blue with the flex that will come along through the new light and of course we're going to have to put a couple of clips in that cable as well to make sure that that's clipped nice and neat I do find that having a box of these clips in your van is always a bonus because there's always a coaxial hanging down that you want to tidy up. Or, like you say here, you've got an outside light where you need to put a couple of little clips on to hold that cable back. Get them in there. Yes, and I know someone will moan about me hammering it into the mortar. Well, it keeps it nice and neat, and into the mortar is a lot easier than into that brick. And then if it ever comes off the wall, you ain't got a hole in the brick. You can just go straight over that mortar and it'll look nice and neat. Yeah, that one ain't gone, it hasn't gone in level, as you can tell, but I'll get it in there. And then after you've done all your connections, put a bit more silicon sealant in there just to seal the holes up. I just like to go that little bit extra just to seal them up. So if any moisture does get in there, or, well, no, I don't want moisture to get in there, to be honest. So there shouldn't be any moisture to get in there whatsoever. Curl them up nice and neat. There's plenty of length on there in case anyone ever comes to that junction box again and anything happens so there's plenty of length on there you can curl them straight in don't just do them nice and short i hate it when people cut things really really short and then when you have got a problem and you can't get to it you've got to rewire it anyway because the cable's too bleeding short it's a nightmare so let's get the lid back on so that makes it ip rated for outside use and on this property how convenient is it that that fuse board's in that little cupboard next to me perfect well we know it works and we're spot on and we're laughing so that lights on on to the next but of course all we've got to do is have a word with the customer to see how long they want it to stay on for and i always like to put them on their maximum sensitivity and guide it down a bit because right behind me is somebody else's um, property and you don't want it to be shining down in someone's property so i'll put it down a little bit so it doesn't shine into property it just shines on the back garden what the lady wanted So 
So then there we go, lights on, nice, neat and tidy. All we've got to do now is pack away. And of course, do a couple of uh, yeah selfies for my social media. Make sure you leave a like 